Hello, I'm David Hutchins and I'm going to attempt to explain the fallacy of the so-called FAP failure appraisal and prevention approach to managing quality related costs. There is a serious flaw in the FAP argument which will lead to serious problems if not understood. Many viewers will be familiar with this graph, sometimes shown as its mirror image. The theory underlying this set of curves is intended to convey the impression that there is an optimum level of quality cost, which therefore becomes the desirable target. This is a flawed argument. The curve suggests that if a producer is at position A, then the total costs will be high due to excessive failure and appraisal costs. It is then suggested that the costs will fall as more attention is given to prevention costs. This is correct. However, the advocates of this model then suggest that continued and progressive reductions in quality costs will eventually lead to a situation where an optimum value is reached, beyond which the cost of further prevention efforts will outweigh the benefits. Hence, the overall cost will rise. For example, in this figure, the company would move from position A through position B to position C. The flaw in the argument results from ignoring the fact that the organisation has probably got competitors. At point A, the probability is that all of them are tightly bunched at the same place as shown on the graph. The reason being that if any one of the competitors were much better than the others, then at least the worst one would be pushed out of the market. The customer would naturally prefer the better products. This is what happened in the automotive industry in the 1970s. What then happens is illustrated here. This illustration indicates that as the best producer continually reduces his quality related costs, it will effectively drive the costs of the less capable competitors upwards behind him. The reason being that society will now expect the better product and will calibrate his expectations accordingly. This will result in a lower level of tolerance for the poorer performers with the result that they will get more complaints and fewer sales. This implies that the best producer, in the eyes of the customer, will always be at the optimum irrespective of other considerations, provided that the improvements that he's made result in greater consumer preference. The optimum, therefore, will appear always to move ahead of him. Therefore, there are no markets where anyone has ever reached an optimum. Always there are better ways of doing things, and for the Hoshin Canary led organisation, this is another opportunity to exploit the competition. The customer's perception of his wants are to a large extent driven by the best and most perceptive supplier. By examining the key performance indicators collectively, all those KPIs which can result in both cost reduction and greater customer satisfaction should be given priority. The only way in which a poor performer can compete with a high performer if he is not able to close the gap is to attempt to sell at a lower price. Of course, this is a popular strategy for many people because there is always someone looking for a bargain. However, as the figure indicates, this is of dubious merit because the better performer, A, will have the advantage of lower costs and can also sell at premium prices. The profits of the poor performer, B, on the other hand, is squeezed both on selling price and by incurring higher costs to produce. He is also vulnerable if the better performer decides to use price competition and then sets a level below the inferior company B's cost to produce. It is evident, therefore, that there are no absolutes where quality is concerned. Quality is a comparative concept and is and always will be dynamic. That is why no one has ever reached the optimum. It doesn't exist. Always people will want something better if someone finds a better way to produce it. Thank you for watching.